the Adopt a Child Project is a philanthropic initiative by the Main Nine Foundation, headed by businessman, philanthropist, and sports administrator, Mr. Ebert Mesa, to sponsor surgeries for children in the pediatric intensive care unit of the Confuanoche Teaching Hospital. This is as a result of mistakenly consuming caustic soda, a raw material for soap making among poor communities in Ghana. Most parents whose children suffer this fate cannot afford to pay for the expensive surgeries, which cost between 10,000 and 18,000 Ghana cities. Most times, the doctors here have to contribute their own money from their own pockets to help carry out the surgeries for these little children whose parents cannot afford the high cost involved. The pediatric intensive care unit is a unit where the sickest children in the hospital are. Uh, our unit takes care of all children who are very sick. So they can be children who need surgical care, can be children who have received burns, who are involved in road traffic accidents, and uh, they cannot survive on their own, but they need support, especially with their respiratory system breathing, and then their heart to come. Uh, usually you need a few days to a few weeks for them to uh, get better before they can move out uh, to other units. So uh, be careful. So basically that's what we do here. Uh, and as I said, most of them need this kind of treatment. It's quite expensive to be here to be treated. Uh, in different parts of the world, I mean, very exorbitant. I can tell you that from anywhere from thousand dollars to uh, hundred thousand dollars a day in some parts of the world, we more or less have subsidized to so much of the standard is very negligible. The charges are not too much, but considering that the local population, their standard. We have to find resources elsewhere, even to support this treatment. It's along these lines that uh, we need to do uh, other philanthropic and uh, fundraising activities. We have our own foundation that doctors and nurses set up, managed by doctors and nurses, not by uh, Confanochi Management. Confanochi Management is aware. It's a registered charity organization that we have our accounts audited every year uh, by the government uh, registered in our so, little steps foundation. So that's what we use that foundation to raise funds to support patients who come in and cannot afford. Um, in terms of what we do actually here, we need we use machines, very expensive and then powerful electronic machines, medical machines that help them breathe. Uh, we call them life support machine or mechanical ventilators. So these are uh, equipment that we tend to use. Also we use others uh, whilst we put them on these machines. We need to know what is happening. Knowing what is happening means you have to have a monitor that should tell you how the heart fast heart is beating, whether the oxygen you are giving the patient is taking it up or well. So it helps you guide you as to what you do again. Other things we use are specific machine, delivery machines that have medications and IV fluids. Uh, the fluid the patient needs, you need to be exact. Sometimes you run as slow as 0.1 mil per hour. You can't do that with your eyes. We you use uh, equipment called syringe uh, pumps to do that. Uh, we don't have enough, as you can see. Uh, fortunately, we have a room, we have a bigger space that we can we'll be using very soon. But these things are not adequate. And the equipment and other things we need to work on the patients. It will be lovely if May and for the foundation can come in and then support us. Actually, let me say we are looking forward to uh, what you have to offer to what we see our future. Because when we say children, we always say they are our future. But unfortunately, that's not what uh, our practice tells us. They usually get a scrap after the adult is considered what is left to give to the child. And that's what we are trying as doctors and nurses, trying to change the narrative currently at Confanochi Teaching Hospital.
the kids and uh, uh, the microscope now, the ones you want to support, they are the ones who have ingested uh, chemicals that have burned their throat. And the throat, when the food pipe is virtually gone, so they have to be reconstructed. And during that reconstruction, it's estimated to cost about 15,000 cities per patient. The chunk of it actually, after said, they spent most of their uh, time, the critical period here. And this has been a very supportive unit that has allowed the surgeons to do a lot of uh, important surgeries, life-saving and important surgeries for our children. Without this unit, uh, we wouldn't be able to do most of the things they are doing with the skill they have. They have the skill, but they need also support. Uh, when they come here, they need antibiotics. Some of them, a number of them have to spend some time on their life support machine up to even a week in some cases, sometimes more than that, get them to recover before uh, they, they leave here for full recovery on their main road. I speak to you right now. This is the only of such unit in Ghana. Uh, yes, uh, and actually even on the west coast, because they are isolated uh, ones, uh, as far as we can remember. I think it's Senegal, apart from Senegal and here, there's none on the uh, in, in the sub region now, but it's manned by the African Council. So there's a, a real need for such units to be established in, uh, in the, on the west coast of Africa. Yeah. As of now, we have, we have three patients. Uh, two of them had accident. One was through traffic accident. The other one was in a room when the TV in that room fell and hit him on the head and the chest. And then the third one is one of the cases, uh, the uh, caustic soda injection, which is a radial tree so that they are going to do surgery. And now we do at least one every week for the uh, beginning of this year. We're doing one every week. Caustic soda injection. Caustic soda injection. And uh, on the average, we are spending seven, six to seven days with us here. Uh, the, the one we, are, we have on with us here, he said his surgery was done yesterday. If we had enough space, I'm sure the surgeons would have fly, yeah, the surgeons would have liked to do a little bit more than one a week because they have a lot of uh, backlog cases that they need to do. Uh, so we need we need the support to be able to plan these patients. We know there are a lot of people out there who would love to support. From the experience we had. These kids are our future, and the conditions they bring in here, their life breaker, it's almost taking their lives away. But their brain, they are so intact, they need this little support to be able to pull through this condition. They will survive and live uh, the normal life like any child is going to live. They can play, they jump, they go to school, and they will become people, great men in the future too. Hold for when we are not uh, when we are not there. So we need to give them all the support uh, we can. I'm appealing to all those who are touched by the stories the parents have told about how these accidents occurred at home. Some most of them it's not their fault. Uh, they have to find something to eat through these uh, finding something to eat. Accidentally, the kids pick them up and then drink it. Uh, they need the support, and I'm asking the general public to come to our needs, to come to their needs, to come to the, the, uh, the, our future's needs. We are talking about our future. We are not talking about individual, any other person. Human beings are generation of our future. And this is the time for all of us to contribute and be part of what is going on. Join me, Nine Foundation. To raise funds, uh, come with uh, everything you have, the little you have will be well appreciated. All of the children needing surgeries have had to wait for several months, sometimes over a year, to be able to raise the money. In the meantime, the children eat through a tube inserted through their stomachs. <coughs> I'm 
has been done for now is that we place a feeding tube into the stomach through which they are fed. Uh, what we are doing is that we are trying to build them up and for them to be able to eat through the mouth again we have to do a surgery on them. Yes and uh, that surgery is quite expensive. Yes as we were told between 15 to 18,000 Ghana citizens because um, most of the things that we use are things that we have to buy from outside and they, they are quite expensive. Uh, so that, uh, aside that, they spend quite a long time in the intensive care unit, which is also very expensive. So all these contribute to the cost. Uh, unfortunately, most of the parents are from the that's a, the low income group, yes. and because of that, they cannot even afford. Mm. See, the fact that they are even trying to make soup at home tells you that things are not going well. Because how much does it cost to buy a soup yes. from outside? Maybe one city, two cities, you can buy soap and use. But the fact that they have decided to prepare their own soup tells you that things are not going on well. Yes, yes. So um, the children need help yes, because the parents cannot afford right? And if we say that we should leave the parents to go and look for the money, it's not going to, to happen now. Because what I have realized is that uh, it's not that the parents don't like their children, or them, but the fact that it's not the parents who are suffering directly. Sometimes when they have to sacrifice something to pay for the health of their children, it's a bit challenging for them. And in our part of the world, there's a belief that, well, even if this child dies, you can give birth to another one. So most of them, they don't want to sacrifice much when it comes to Yes, and so we have to follow benevolent individuals and organizations to come to their aid. Wow. Yes. And, um, um, through this also um, trying to tell people, those who are into the making of soap, that they should be very careful in handling the cost of soda because it's a very dangerous substance. Yes, if they have kept them well, I don't think all these problems would have okay. It looks as if the numbers is shooting up very fast. I think initially about Ten or so years ago, in a year, we may see just about one or two, but now almost every month, we see about two wow. cases, yes, which is quite a lot. Yes, so um, 
those who are making soap in their homes, they should make sure that they keep the caustic soda in a well secured place so that no child can get access to it. I think prevention is better than cure. Yes. For some of them, the surgery can be done maybe in a month or two time. There are others, as I told you, yes. there are some others who I tried calling but I could not get access to them. Yes. But for, for one of them, he is ready for surgery, but the problem was the financial aspect. So we are trying to see how maybe after doing a number of surgeries, we really get one or two bottles of some drugs remaining here and there. We we'll put them together so that we can sort them out. But unfortunately, uh, where they are staying, reception is not uh, good there. So that is a challenge. But when we get it for him, we could have done it maybe in a week or so. Sorry about for these ones. Uh, you can see this one, for instance, is we discharged her just about a week or so ago. But when she came, if you had seen, she was like a, uh, just bones. Yes, skeleton. Right, so we have to build her up. And so this one may take about six or so months before we can operate on her. But the remaining two, yes. something can be done for them. I want to tell the general public, as I said first, they should be very careful in handling these substances. Yes. Right. And then the second thing is that some children unfortunately have suffered the consequences of the mishandling of this constant soda. Unfortunately, their parents are not in the position to sponsor for their treatment. So I'm appealing to the general public, both individuals and organizations, to come to their aid. So, My interest for now lies in operating on these children who have a problem with their truth. Because, uh, Unfortunately for me, when I was uh, just a young doctor, a niece of mine, a niece of mine also had that problem. I accidentally ingested cosmetics, so at that time I didn't have the expertise to handle. Unfortunately, we lost her. Yeah, so when I specialized, I decided that I have to do something to help these children. And this is why the May 9 Foundation, which has been engaged in philanthropy, for several years has begun the adopt a child project aimed at raising funds to come to the aid of these children it is hoped that this initiative from the May 9 foundation will encourage and touch the hearts of other organizations and companies as well as individuals to contribute by adopting and sponsoring the surgeries of children of the pediatric intensive care unit of the Confanoche teaching hospital to save a life sooner than later.